NFTs hold insane potential to revolutionize countless industries. We've seen NFTs absolutely blow up over the past year. Countless NFT collections have come out of the scene and soared to insane valuations. And in spite of all this, we've seen a ton of skepticism around NFTs as well, saying like, hey, this is all just some crazy speculative bubble around digital art. And I totally get that. But we're actually just scratching the surface for what you can even do with NFTs. And this video, I want to talk about the crazy future potential for NFTs beyond what we're seeing today, because this is just the tip of the iceberg. So I'm going to talk about this as a blockchain developer versus technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to know how to master blockchain step-by-step start to finish, then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today. All right, so let's talk about the crazy future for NFTs. There's so many things that we can do with this new technology, and we're just scratching the surface. And I'm explaining what some of the top things are in this video. But first, let's just lay the groundwork and talk about what people are doing now with NFTs. So primarily, people are buying digital artworks, digital collectibles, like CryptoPunks, Board Ape Yacht Club, and others. And they're either holding them or they're like selling them on an open marketplace like OpenSea for profit. Additionally, they're buying Metaverse land and also uh, gaming items. These are some of the top use cases for NFTs right now, but this is just the beginning. So what makes these use cases work and how can we apply these qualities to other things? So let's start off with NFTs. What does it mean? Non-fungible token. So it's a token. It's an item that you can hold on a blockchain. All right. But it's non-fungible. So what does that mean? Well, fungible versus non-fungible. Fungible is like a cryptocurrency where you have a collection of items and it doesn't matter which item you have in the collection. It doesn't matter if you have the first Bitcoin mine or the last Bitcoin mine. They're completely interchangeable. Non-fungible is different. You have a collection of items and it matters which item you have in that collection. Think like trading cards, for example. It matters which trading cards you have because one might be more valuable than the other. It might be more rare. And so we've seen that type of use case, that non-fungible token, applied to digital collectibles because it's a really easy thing to connect. And so these are the types of things we can apply to so many other use cases. So we're talking about here is, you know, non-fungible it's digitally scarce. You have full ownership over it. You can send it to whoever you want to. You can sell on any marketplace you want to, you know, without intermediaries and it's completely censorship resistant. So what are the other things we can apply this to? So one industry that's prime for disruption, in my opinion, is the music industry. Okay, this is no secret. We're already seeing articles like this, um, you know, here in Forbes talking about how NFTs could define the future of music. So I have a background in the music industry before I got into the software industry. So I'm very well aware of the problems that, you know, play musicians, record labels, and pretty much everybody in the space. And one of the biggest things that, you know, NFTs can potentially disrupt is intellectual property rights of creators. So basically, this means that, you know, the, the rights to individual music recordings or, you know, song lyrics or compositions could be turned into NFTs. And and so that has a couple different things. So, you know, the individual recordings themselves. So actually the files that like you consume and listen to could be made digitally scarce. OK, this was one of the biggest problems with music distribution and why, you know, things like Napster completely took down the recording industries because you could reproduce music digitally and people could just consume it without paying for it. And they tried a lot of stuff with like embedded digital rights management that never really worked. And then, you know, eventually we came on with streaming and you kind of have all the record labels sort of get on board because you really got no other choice. And that leaves artists basically getting paid fractions of a penny for every single stream. So the potential for NFTs with the actual recordings themselves is to create that digital scarcity. And this does a couple things. It makes it harder to consume music in a pirated way. And it also gives artists more control over their own creations. I mean, assuming that they actually own the recordings if it's not a record label owning it. So that's the first thing. And the other side of this, and this gives two sides kind of the same coin, is the actual intellectual property of the compositions themselves. So this could be if you just written a song, maybe you didn't record it, you know, that could be linked with the record where anytime that song is played, you're guaranteed to have royalties automatically sent to you, okay? Because right now, there's this really convoluted process of having like all these intermediaries that are responsible for making sure people are reporting anytime music is played. And then there's all that fat in the system before all that gets reported back and then the artist eventually gets paid and it takes a long time. So what if you could just completely automate that process and then the artist doesn't have to wait to get paid? 
basically, you know, within a matter of minutes after a song is actually played, you could get paid out. That's the potential future use case here. And then lastly, with the intellectual property rights themselves, okay, so what happens if those want to be transferred and sold to somebody else? We see this happen, you know, from time to time where big music catalogs get purchased by somebody else. I recently saw this with the Bruce Springsteen catalog in maybe the past couple months or something like that. So there's no reason that that transaction couldn't take place on a blockchain itself. Or like, what if in the future you could get on Coinbase, Binance, FTX, and then buy, you know, the Beatles music catalog or something like that. That's another huge future potential for NFTs in the music industry. All right, so next big use case that we can use NFTs for is actual ticketing for events, okay? So this is a pretty easy thing to model as NFTs because really that's what a that's what a ticket is. It's a contract that you have the right uh, to claim a seat at a certain place and time for a certain event. Okay, it's, it's an easy, non-fungible item. And what are the benefits of blockchain with this? Well, it's digitally scarce. You, there's no intermediaries. You have full ownership over it. You can sell it wherever you want. Censorship resistant. Nobody can take your ticket away from you. And we're already starting to see lots of people get into the ticketing space with NFTs. And I think this is a big part that's going to... I think this is a big industry that we're going to see lots of NFT integration. Just recently, we saw... Uh, the Super Bowl give people limited edition NFTs after they attended the Super Bowl. So that wasn't like your ticket to get in, but it's a new use case. So what are some potential ways that tickets can actually be made better with blockchain rather than just taking some existing use case and just copying and pasting the blockchain just because you can? Well, primarily what it does is it takes the tickets and it adds new potential functionality to them, okay? So basically, let's say that you wanted to sell your NFT ticket to somebody else online. Well, when they look at your wallet, you sign the message from that wallet, they can verify that you are the person that actually owns it and that the NFT ticket is legit. It's the official ticket itself because what if you want to go buy a ticket for somebody else online? There's trust involved that that's actually the real ticket to the event. Now, I know there's third-party services that can help with this, but there's still lots of trust assumptions involved. This removes all that. It's automation. You can see you know, who, would, who the ticket comes from and what it's for. And this opens a possibility to sell your tickets in multiple places. You're not just like confined the existing marketplaces if you want that extra trust, which you're going to pay a premium for. Next, it makes ticketing like even more digital, okay? Tickets are already trending that way. People using the, you know, near field reader chips and their phones and things like that. But with digital signatures, that process can get even better. It just takes it to the next level. You could add advanced functionality to, uh, you know, these NFT tickets. You can make them programmable. Let's say you wanted to make a ticket non-transferable. You could do that with NFTs. Or let's say that you wanted to create a ticket that had some special benefit for people who held it, you know, after a certain date, or maybe you want to retroactively send those people something, you could do that with NFTs because you still have a connection to them, okay? So this also opens up all kinds of new marketing potential where, you know, let's say that you want to send out some sort of marketing effort to a person who holds it. Well, you have direct communication and direct access to that person and even who currently holds a ticket, not necessarily who bought it. I mean, let's say you bought a different email address and then you sold it to someone else and then you sent out a marketing email to the original purchaser. That's not going to do any good. But if you actually have the NFT, then you have direct contact to the actual owner. And this also has all kinds of new features and benefits like uh, this example project here that got pulled up my screen, like the proof of attendance protocol. This is kind of like ticketing, but in reverse. Like, you know, you got a ticket that lets you get into an event. This is like where you go to an event and then you get, you know, a token that proves that you were there. So we can see a little bit about this project. So proof of a pretendence protocol provides event nomads a way to verify their tenants through collecting digital badges, all of which live on chain. So each badge is unique and it is an NFT. And the only way you can get one is actually by showing up and being signed, proving that you were there. All right, so the next big place that I think we can see a lot of disruption with NFTs is actually with physical real estate. We're already seeing with virtual real estate, but I think physical real estate is prime for disruption. Why is that? Well, think about it. Real estate is is a collection of items and it matters which item you have, okay? Because what's the name of the game in uh, real estate? Location, 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 all right? And then also, in addition to that, like what's how many square feet does the property have? You know, what are the finishes like? Lots of factors determine a property's value. And so you need an individual token to represent that. Now, why would you want to model real estate this way? Well, because basically, anytime you sell real estate and transfer it, there's all this fat in the system, okay? And there's lots of automation that can be introduced with this and actually be improved by blockchain technology and with NFTs. And so for that reason, there's a huge incentive for somebody to crack that code and then make a lot of money off this. We're already seeing lots of examples of this in the space, but it also continues on the current trend of where real estate's headed 
uh, which is to be a, a completely online process or the you know option of being a completely online process. Okay, so right now people are primarily window shopping for real estate on you know websites like Zillow and others, right? And then maybe they link up with the realtor to actually look at the property and then facilitate the transaction. But a lot of discovery is done, you know, online. And we even see experiments where like people do Zillow offers and things like that, where Zillow's buying the properties and you can kind of just buy it straight from them. Some of that's, you know, had mixed success. But the whole point is we're pushing in that direction. And so when you introduce NFTs into this, you introduce the ability to reduce the number of people that are required to finalize that transaction. And then thus you could link that back into that next step of online purchasing. Okay. So whenever you purchase a piece of property, there's this, you know, you go to a closing where there's all these middlemen that, you know, want to cut whenever you make that transaction. You know, you have to have somebody check on the title for the property. You have all these different things that have to be audited. Okay. So some of that, honestly, like you don't necessarily even need, like, especially if you have blockchain, you have no need to do a title search if you had the entire history of that property on chain. And all the people after the legal paperwork to actually transfer the title from, you know, the owner to the buyer. Okay. All that can be completely automated with NFTs, with blockchain to drastically reduce the cost, the closing costs on the property itself. And whenever that's, you know, sort of solved, I mean, you can even do this with cryptocurrency to completely automate it. As long as the transaction is done in crypto, you could just, you know, trustlessly move the ownership of property from one wallet to another. And then you plug that into the online shopping piece. I mean, let's say that you had a website where, you know, you go look at a property and then you put on literally like metaverse goggles and then you step into like a 3D experience of the property and you tour it that way. And then you just sort of like kick the tires and you just buy it sight unseen because it's good enough. Okay. And then you just literally buy it in crypto on the spot. Like that is a potential future. I'm not saying it's going to be the normal experience for everybody, but that's what could happen with all this. All right. So the last big area for disruption that I want to talk about the NFTs is actually what's going on with social media. Okay. So, you know, social media has seen a lot of problems with, you know, censorship, uh, all this type of stuff. And lots of people are hungry for a Web3 alternative to social media. And NFTs potentially offer that. Okay. So uh, recently, we've seen a new protocol called Lens come out that actually uses NFTs for social networks. So this is launched by uh, you know, the, the founder of Aave, one of those popular decentralized finance protocols on top of Ethereum. So they've created a Web3 native social network powered by non fungible tokens or NFTs that essentially lets content creators own more of their own identities. Okay. So, like I was saying before, one of the biggest problems with social media is this idea of like, you know, censorship resistance, deplatforming, or also just like taking people's data and owning it, the platform. It's the whole thing of like, you know, if you're using their product for free, then you are the product. You sign up for Facebook and, you know, you don't pay anything for Facebook. Well, it's because Facebook's making money off you by selling your information to advertisers, to show you ads, lots of different ways. Okay. So Web3 social networks can flip that upside down and, and actually give you an NFT that is your identity. Okay. And that's what it can represent you on the blockchain in a way that you could potentially own that information and give you an advantage there. Gives you lots of other benefits, like the ability to transfer your social graph, all the other NFTs or identities that you connect with to different apps. So let's say that, you know, you instead of, you know, being on YouTube and then following all these, you know, channels on YouTube, then if that person also has a Twitter handle, then, you know, you have to follow them on Twitter. Well, what happens if your social graph just transfers in between each protocol automatically? And then maybe you could filter who you wanted to see on each one. But like you go join a new app and you're automatically following all the people you follow somewhere else. Okay, that's a huge benefit. Um, in addition to owning your own data, just scratching the surface on how you could use that as an NFT inside of social networks. All right, so that's an overview of what we can do with NFTs in the future. We are just scratching the surface with the current use cases. Okay, uh, that there's insane potential for lots of different industries. And I've just named a couple in this video. So if you want to learn more about this, then definitely subscribe to the channel, smash that like button down below. I'll be more making more videos talking about this, where the future of Web 3.0 is headed. And if you're as fast in this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? You can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step or hey, Maybe you'll take a master shortcut entirely. I can sure to become a blockchain master step by step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.